let's talk about the habits that is helping your walk with God. And I'm speaking about these seven habits. They are very important habits as much as they sound simple. Number one is reading your Bible. The reality is that how are you going to know God without reading his word? Everything that will make you know God better or walk with God better without being manipulated or used or confused by anybody is to read your Bible. Because most times when you don't read your Bible, people can come and give you words that sound like the word of God or sound so good and so true. And then you allow it to stick to your mind and might even get to a place of applying and walking in it, thinking it is the word of God, not knowing that it is not the word of God. It's just like the statement that says, man proposes, God disposes. It is not a direct Bible word. But there are a lot of people who quote it as if it is scripture and then go amiss. So that is why you have to read the word of God so that you wouldn't be confused. When the devil came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, he quoted Psalm 91 to Jesus and then he quoted it amiss. But Jesus knows the word. So he answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus used the word of God, the written word of God, to combat the enemy, the devil. Number two, it's study your Bible. The reality of reading your Bible and studying your Bible are two different things. Sometimes you may not have that time to just study, so that is why you just have to be reading. You do not have to understand everything you can be reading through, which is the first point. This second point is you have to create intentional time to study the Bible and look for study materials, study Bible, and read in between the lines, in between the words, so that you can get something, the juice, out of each verse that you read, which is I would find time to you know, speak about, do a video about studying the Bible and how I do study the Bible from my own viewpoints. And it's very important to study the Bible because to really gain revelation in the Word of God is when you spend time to study each word, to go deep into each line, to go deep into even knowing the origin of the word, where did it come from? Where did this and that come from? Of course, if you know a little about the Bible, you know that the New Testament is written in Greek and the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And then all of that is going to help you so that when you go into the study materials, you would know how to search the words. Of course, now we have technology and a lot of ways you can go about that. So that is one of another habit to get to help your work with God to study the word of God because scripture says the entrance of your word O Lord brings light or gives light which means how does the word enter except you've studied and then a revelation pops up out of it it brings light it brings illumination it brings such joy to you even as a human the third thing I would talk about here is listening to anointed messages and preaching of the word of God. The Bible says Paul wrote that that God uses the foolishness of preaching to save lives. Preaching could look like one kind of like, you know, I don't like preaching and all of that, but when you sit under an anointed preaching of the word of God, it gives you light. Like you get a lot of light. And preaching is not all in all, which is a lot of Christians only base their life in going to conferences and sitting down in, and listening to good preaching, good theological preaching, anointed preaching that motivates them, but they do nothing with that. Whenever you hear the word preached, and I'm speaking to myself also because I sit under an anointed message whereby I'm being inspired and motivated and all of that. And then I leave that place without applying that word and going deeper to search the very word that was released to me. That is where studying your Bible comes back to you. That when you sit down under an anointed teaching and preaching of the word of God, when you go back, Go deep in it so that the revelation can be owned by you. You enjoyed it, but that is not all you needed from that word. You need to feed on it, to eat it, to digest that word so that that revelation becomes something you can own and personalize. The next point is prayer. 
the reality is that scripture did not say if you pray but it says when you pray when jesus had to teach the disciples about you know the lord's prayer how to pray because they said father lord teach us how to pray he says when you pray it lead them into this teaching which means you need to pray you need to communicate with god you need to talk with god not just talk to god prayer is not about this monologue of like i'm talking to god i'm talking to god i'm talking to god i'm talking to god like a lot of christians do you always go talk to god talk to god talk to god talk to god ask 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 when is the time that you listen to him when is the time that you allow him talk back to you which is if you are talking with God, like I would sit down with you right now and have a conversation, it means I am sharing my thoughts and I'm waiting for your response and you are talking back to me. Now, this happens when you are studying the word of God and reading the Bible and then you are actually praying. Because to me, personal, this is my personal you know, reality. When I study the word of God, it is my time of prayer also. Because as I'm studying, I'm also talking with God. And then through his word, he's communicating truth to me. And then I talk back to him. I find time in that space and then tell him my heart and all of that. But then you have to create intentional time to just talk with God, converse with God, you know, in line with his word and with his will. There are a lot of videos about how to pray the right way, but you need to cultivate the habit of prayer, not in a religious sense, but in a real life sense of knowing that you are communicating with God. You are having a conversation with God. It is not something that you feel guilty that you do not pray, but it's something that you missed. It's like having a good friend that you know that when you guys get into conversation, it's so sweet to your soul. This conversation blesses your life and then you miss it. Not like you feel guilty about not talking, but you miss praying. So you need to keep on praying because it is an enjoyable thing. It's not a burden on you. You're not just doing this. It's a habit that you've cultivated. Habits are things that when you cultivate, you get to enjoy it. So cultivate the habit of praying. It's going to help your work with God. The next point is meditation in the word of God. The scripture says in Psalms 1 verse 1 and 2, What delight comes to the one who follows God's ways? He won't walk in step with the wicked, nor share the sinner's way, nor be found sitting in the corner seat. His passion is to remain true to the word of I am, meditating day and night on the true revelation of light. Meditating day and night on the true revelation of light. The word of God is this revelation of light. You've studied the word, you've read the word. Now, that is not all. You have to meditate on the word day and night. This is your food. This is the contemplations of your heart. Instead of anxiety, instead of allowing your mind to wander aimlessly, you meditate and chew on the word of God. It is not just mental you know, preoccupation or, or mental exercise. It, the meditation here in scripture, which there are teachings around this, you can look for how to meditate in the word of God and then you get to learn more about that. But it's about reciting the word of God under your breath. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. That is meditation. In your quiet time, it's meditation. Scriptures in Philippians chapter 4 says, You know, instead of anxiety, Take all your requests to God with thanksgiving and prayer and then the God of peace will be with you and the peace of God will guard your heart. So all of these is you are taking time to chew on the word of God, to chew, to haggah, to regurgitate the word of God, to speak it under your breath, speak it over yourself. Maybe in, term, in places of your fear, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind you need to learn how to meditate in the word of god it is not a big kind of complex thing it is just about reciting the word under your breath and believing in your heart this is the word of god now the next point is loving god and loving people jesus summarized the law into two 
it says love the lord your god with all your heart all your mind all your soul and then love your neighbor as you love yourself and when he came to speak to his disciples he said do not just love your neighbor as you love yourself because a lot of people don't know how to love themselves instead he told them love your neighbor as i have loved you love one another as i have loved you which is let my love be the template of how you love people now he, he puts the standard up now this is going to help your work with god because you're not just working with god as if this is some kind of pretentious way of living you're pretending but then you're working with god knowing that this is personal this is real to you this is your reality this is something that you are so honest about you're loving god you want to serve god with all your heart and then you are also loving your neighbor the last thing is living a lifestyle acceptable to god this is going to help your work this is an habit to help your work with god paul said i plead with you brethren that you would offer your body your body not your spirit your body not your spirit again your body not your spirit as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is a reasonable service so it is you knowing that living a lifestyle and doing things that honor god and honor his word is an habit that is helping your work with god thank you so much for watching this video to the end and i hope that this video is a blessing to your life these are the seven steps and which there are more but these are the seven that i've put out here that will help your work with god the seven habits that are going to help your work with god thank you and god bless you i am um it is a pleasure to have you watch this video give it a thumbs up and then subscribe to this channel if you are yet to share this video to your friends and your family it is a delight to have you watch god bless you bye